I think what I like is interaction, asking questions, being willing to make mistakes, and thereby really bringing progress to mathematics. Very much the same. If you want to make distinction, I like my mathematicians handsome and my ma female mathematicians beautiful. But the same qualities, interacting with people and pushing mathematics. That's an interesting question. Maybe I'll pick purple because with purple there's a lot to figure out. Is it more blue? Is it more green? Is it more something else? And there's a lot to figure out in mathematics and a lot to learn with and from mathematicians. Another good question. Um, I, I do music on the side and I think that's maybe the closest one. The way I do it is uh, as a performing musician only. Maybe composition is similar. There are rules. In the case of music, they're man-made. In the case of mathematics, they're intrinsic. But to be truly creative, one needs to be creative within the rules of the game. Oh, I don't like to objectify mathematicians. <laughs> Um, maybe a beautiful piece of complicated origami because there's a lot to explore and many layers to figure out. Well, I'm happy to be myself. There may be great qualities in some other mathematicians that I wish I had, but in the end, I'm quite happy to be who I am. And in part because I've chosen a job and a career where my job every year is what I want it to be, which is never the same from one year to the next. And I have a lot of choice to do what I want to do and how I go about doing it. So couldn't be any better. Ah, that's a good question. There are obviously um, stellar mathematicians around. They might be superheroes in that respect. A young one is Terence Tao, who is legendary for energy and creativity and lots of achievements in many different fields of mathematics. Of course, there are great historical figures as well. On the other hand, I think there are also mathematicians I admire who've chosen then to do something completely different, like Bob Zimmer, who is the president of the University of Chicago, Patrick Foulon, who directs this institute right here. So there could be many kinds of superheroes, as there are in many superhero movies. Here were a few. One thing I like about being a mathematician and about mathematicians is that as a community there are very accepting of people being different and <clears throat> judging people by what they do in mathematics and accepting other quirks because it's all about sharing the excitement of doing mathematics. So I like this openness and I think that exceeds most other disciplines. Mathematicians, sometimes what I find people stumbling over, and that is really sad, is we're professionally trained to be very honest. The proofs have to be completely rigorous. And that prevents some mathematicians from communicating effectively. Because to get ideas across, one needs to omit the details and decide to get to the heart of something. And it's unfortunate that many of us, and sometimes that includes me, are hampered by it. Too much honesty, too much worry about detail, instead of focusing on the ideas and getting across the excitement of what we do. Uh, well, maybe uh, a laptop with a satellite internet connection so it's not as lonely. Um, otherwise, what would I take? I think with nothing there, it would have to be a few good books. Uh, they could be mathematics, they could be otherwise. My favorite math book, that changes all the time, depending on what I'm interested in, what I've seen lately. Um, just now, I'd say it's a lovely book by Yves Couden on ergodic theory in which everything appears in a perfect natural, the cleanest possible way. It's just beautifully organized. This is a book I only learned about a few weeks ago at one of the great meetings here. There are other books that are previous times of my favorite ones because they have other wonderful qualities. Uh, 
Uh, I don't usually read right before bedtime. Sometimes I do. Um, mathematically, it might be things like the notebooks of Ian Stewart. They provide adorable nuggets of mathematics. And since they're small each, one can read for a little bit and then call it a night and then wake up maybe with an appreciation of the ideas that were in there the, last, the previous night. Otherwise, for literature, too, for bedtime reading, of course, it should be short things rather than long novels. I love Oscar Wilde. There's witticism and warmth in what he writes. Um, many other things that change. For instance, I've not read him in a while. A book that was not for bedtime reading is 30 years ago. I was studying for qualifying exams at Maryland for an entire summer. And in that summer, I read the entire collected work of Sherlock Holmes because they made for nice little breaks. Read one story and then study a few more hours. Read one story, study a few more hours. I like music as a hobby. If I were much better at it, maybe it would make a good profession. But frankly, I've come to realize that I've picked the best profession already. So if it couldn't be math, maybe that would be a second. But it's a great hobby and math is a great job. I don't know exactly what, but I don't have much patience for doing routine work. So I think I would have a hard time with experimental sciences because one has to have an idea and then spend a lot of time working it out. Some of that can be fun, but I might lose patience, so I don't think I'd be very good at it. Um, anything that involves doing repetitive things again and again. I like novelty and change and new things to do. What is my mathematical dream? That's an interesting question. Um, I think it, it actually happens in the moments when something works. And mathematics can be frustrating because it can take a long time to get any place with many dead ends and not getting anywhere. And the dream moment is always when suddenly those clarity is clear, either that something's going to work or that it has just worked. And I enjoy the moments when I'm at that point and take a break, just in case it turns out later that it doesn't work out that same way. So the dream is exactly those moments when it's clear how something new is actually happening and taking shape. Oh dear. Um, if God were to tell me, well done, that would be great. Um, as far as mysteries go, there are many, many, and I'm sure after I die, I will find out all of them. One of the ones that famously people think God would have a hard time telling us about even is turbulence. So if that were the case, I know that the world is perfect. <laughs>